this is a little video about how you curve the grades. We all know it when we have a, uh, um, an exam or some tests where we run some scores. Let's say we have uh, uh, an exam where you can generate 70 points and then we look at the scores we have uh, and then we look at the uh, policy that we have about the average score. It doesn't really match up. So, uh, so that's why we sometimes need to curve the grades. So here on this screen, you can see here on the side, um, I have a set of students uh, that's taken an exam and you can see the scores in the yellow column where you can see the first one um, starts, you know, from, well, the, the maximum points that you can get for this one, I've noted in the top, it's uh, 76. Uh, and then you can see scores underneath that uh, from each single student. So the first thing I normally do is that I uh, add average, uh, median, minimum, and maximum, so I can see uh, the computation of each of the score calculations I have. And in this case, you can see that the, uh, uh, the average score in the exam was 55 points out of the 75. Um, and uh, so that's the score. The maximum score was uh, 67, and the minimum was 47. Now, in order to, uh, to curve the grades, uh, you have to, of course, have a target of what are you going to curve it against. Uh, in this case, for, for the school I'm working for here, we have a policy that we should, with this type of class, hit 3.3 or a B plus uh, as the average grade. In this case, uh, I'm looking at the, uh, the grade policy, and as you can see here on the grade policy, uh, this is the number of points that are associated uh, with the different scores. Um, in this case, a B plus uh, starts with 86.5 and ends at uh, 90. So uh, what I do here, I set a, uh, a target score of uh, 88. So that's what I'm going to hit. And that's what you can see here on the, uh, uh, on the column at the bottom that I put in a target of 88%. The first thing I do is then <clears throat> make a standard uh, percentage calculation. And you can see here um, the, the top one. Um, it's calculated by taking the raw exam score for the student and uh, dividing that by the maximum score. So that's the standard uh, percentage that you find in Canvas, Blackboard, and other calculations. Uh, and in this case, you can see the point score here for all the students. Now, <clears throat> as you can see, um, I can carry over the calculation for the mean, median, minimum, and maximum. And right now, we then have a mean score, an average score of 72.95. The target was 88. So you can see that we are 15% uh, lower than the target. So definitely, we need to curve the grades. So how do we do that? Well, the standard way to do it is to take your maximum score. And in this case, the maximum score in terms of percentage um, is 88.16. Now, um, you could also look at the, uh, the maximum, which is uh, 67, and move that up to uh, 76. But I found it's much better to do it with the percentage scores. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. So I'm going off that we have the top scoring uh, student is uh, 88.16. Um, and the distance from that to 100 is the lift that we need to add to all the students. So let's take a look at what happens here. So uh, we can again see the formula. Uh, we have the score of student A, uh, that scores 63.16. We have a lift of 11.84%, uh, and that's why we get the great, the lifted score to uh, 75%. Uh, percent. Um, and then I do that for all the students. And let's have a look at the calculation. Now we can see that uh, the uh, mean went up, but it only went up to 84.79 um, with this uh, standard lift score. So that is uh, still about 3.2 percentage lower than we need to. So the standard uh, curving doesn't work uh, in this instance. We still need to compensate uh, for that. So what do we do next? Well, uh, what we could do is then, of course, uh, look at the average grading. And in this case, we are 3.2% um, too low. So we can take that and add that to the lift. Uh, and that's what you can see up here. I've added the, um, uh, the 
that score to 11.84, so we now have a lift score of 15.05%. And then I basically do the same thing here in, in the column that's called uh, grape score uh, percentage. And so we lift it further with that extra score. And again, you can see now that the average is where we need it to be, it's at 88. Uh, but the problem here is that we have a maximum score of 103 and we only want that to be 100. So we're getting closer, uh, we're, we, we have the average where it needs to be, but we don't have the top where it needs to be. So the third step in the, in the grade curve uh, will then be to, uh, if you want, compress the grading um, because we have too many at the top, so we need to get that under 100. But we, we push up, push under the top. Um, in order to have the same distribution, we also have to push a little bottom part a little bit. So that's what I'm doing. We have a curve of grades. I push it from the top, push it from the bottom in order to hit the average grade. Now, in order to do so, um, the first thing we need to do is to uh, sort it. So we have them in a ranked order. And in Excel, it's, it's pretty simple. You just use the sort function. Uh, and sort it after the, uh, the total scores. And that's uh, what I'm doing here. On this one, you can see that um, I've ranked ordered everything from the, uh, the highest, so the largest score to the smallest score. And then you can see here that we have uh, five um, uh, students that have over 100. So what I do here is then um, I take down the top score. In this case, it's 103.2 to 100. Uh, and then what I'm doing here is figuring out uh, what should be the next one relative to the original score. So the original score, it was 103.2 and the number two was 101.9. The distance there is a little more than uh, a one. So I take half of that. So you can see I bring the second one down to 99.5. Um, I look at the distance between number two and three. Here we have a distance of 1.3. I uh, take about that half of that distance off. So I take give number three students a 99. And you can see the three, four, and five scores the same, so they have to have the same score. Now let's look at student number six. So the, uh, student number six has 96.6. Uh, uh, so what I do here is I round that up. Um, and for the rest of them, they actually get the, uh, the target lifted score. So you can see the top ones here are brought down under 100. And, and then uh, really pretty soon we actually hit the actual scores, uh, the rounded scores. So that's what I put in here. Um, the same thing happens at the bottom. Um, and we need to lift it up. So the bottom student has 76.9. I lift that up to uh, 78. So that's about a one point lift. Um, and then you can see the th three lowest one as they have the same percentage score, they get the same uh, corrected score of 78. Then the next one, um, there's a distance about a one, so I lift that up to 79. So you can see the next ones, the next uh, four ones here, uh, they, that they get the 70, 79. Uh, and then we, uh, we have a, a lift from 78.2 to 79.5 and I lift that up to, uh, to 80. Uh, and then from there on, we actually hit the actual scores, the rounded scores. Now, when I do this push, little push from the bottom, and I've done this little push from the top, you can now see that we have the uh, mean score, which is 88%. Uh, we also have a maximum of 100. Uh, so we now have curved the grades, and we've hit exactly where we need to hit it. Uh, without messing with the internal logic, internal distribution of the students, which is pressed at a little bit up from the top and a little bit from the bottom uh, to hit the target. So that's, uh, that's kind of how you do it. Let's take a look at some of the formulas that are put into this one. I've had a question about that. Um, so um, there is a formula that you can use to follow the grade points uh, because sometimes there might be a difference in the grade points and the percentage scores because of the distribution. So in order to build up a, uh, a grade point score, I use the VLOOKUP function. You can see the formula up in the top here. Uh, the the, the VLOOKUP function is basically built on that you have a grading policy listed or a grading schemes listed uh, where you can see the uh, percentages, the grade points and the grades. And you will need this one to, uh, to calculate 
the actual uh, grade points and grades for the percentages that you're doing. But I, I, I like to follow that so you can see at the bottom here that I also look at where are my grading um, averages in terms of rate points. We still need to hit 3.3 uh, and I can follow that here. And in this case, you can see with the rounded one, we are at 3.27 and that is rounded 3.3. So we are right where we need to be. So that's it. Um, uh, hopefully this was helpful, but that's the process of, of how you actually uh, curve the grades. Um, I also just wanted to show you the distribution scores. So uh, here you can see the uh, distribution of the raw scores, uh, which is how they split out on in the different uh, uh, bins. And at the bottom here, you can see that the, the distribution of the corrected scores. So you can see that the general distribution looks more or less the same, with the same type of curving. Uh, so that's why this method, it messes the little, as little as possible with the distribution of the scores when we are grading it and curving it. All right, so hopefully this little video was helpful. In case you uh, need a uh, uh, the spreadsheet that goes with this one, you're very welcome to, to reach out to me or send an email. You can see that on below here. Uh, and I will be happy to send you uh, an example of the um, Excel sheet uh, if you need it. That's it. Good luck with curving of your scores. If you have any questions, you can always add comments uh, at the bottom here. See ya.